This week's Torah portion is called Lech Lecha. In Hebrew, go, go to you. We learn that Abraham basically started his career as, as a prophet at about 75 years old. What was he doing before then? Well, he was born into an idolatrous family. His father basically owned Idols Are Us, who sold idols to pagans and everybody around, and that's how he made his living. But as he was growing up, he thought to himself, this is why Abraham is Abraham, okay? The first Jew, one, the first forefather, I mean, just incredible. Prophet beyond prophets. So he decided that he's gonna contemplate how can there be a world without a maker? How can everything be random? We're talking about thousands of years ago, this amazing person thought, even at three years old, these idols, these sticks and stones, the sun, the moon, the stars, why are people worshiping them? They do nothing by themselves. It's not possible. When the sun is at its peak in the day, it must be the god of choice. But then it sets. And then we have the moon. Well, how can the moon be the god of choice when it sets and the sun comes back? And there's a pattern. So this must be a maker. And he went through life over and over, talking to people. We learned last week with Noah. Noah spent 120 years building an ark. He couldn't convince one person, as great as he was, to join him. That's why the only people in the ark were him and his family. Everybody else had to perish. Why? Because they were all scumbags. So there was not a worthy person in 120 years they convinced. Abraham, the attribute of kindness, the, the, he was Mr. Kindness. Kindness should be named Abraham. That's who he was. By exploring into people's souls, to get to know them, feeding them, his, they said that his tent was open from four sides. That people from all directions come and get food and delicacies, and he fed all kinds of people, and he fed them knowledge of God. He was the first major monotheist that actually went and tried to take people that were ma major pagans and believed in other things and helped them have a monotheistic kind of philosophy. That is amazing. For that time, I mean, people try to kill you for that, right? Because they really believed in their gods. So what did God do? At 75 years old, after already figuring things out that there must be a maker, after trying to convince thousands of people that there's only one God, God finally says, hey, you, get out of your comfort zone, where you are right now, Mesopotamia area, and go to the land of Canaan, which is Israel, given to the Jews, by the way. This is where it starts, where God says, I've given you this land, all this land to you. That's a whole other story. We'll leave it for another day. But the point being is, God said, get out of your comfort zone, head to the land, and there I will make you into a great nation. Okay. He was a stargazer. He tried to figure out, you know, what was going on in life. And reading the stars, like the pagans, he said, I'm not destined to have children. How are you going to make me into a great nation when I'm not even destined to have children? So God says, ah, your name is Avram. And I'm going to add a Hebrew letter to your name. You're going to be Avraham. And that changed everything. Now, I'm not saying for you people to change your name. That's not the point. The point being is, God said, he did it without complaints, without anything. You want me to go to land? Okay. You want me to be a great nation here? And as, as it's taught in Judaism that sometimes location and where you are is a change in your luck or flow of energy. So Abraham did exactly as God said. There was a famine in the land. He had to go down to Egypt. He came back, there was a lot of stories in between. The point being is, he did what God told him to do. He didn't complain, he passed all his trials and tribulations, he, he was challenged, but yet he never complained. And he did everything with alacrity. What God said for me to do, I'm not going anywhere by chance. If you want me to go here, it's because you want me to. If you want me to go there, it's because you want me to. He could have had every business deal come to him, he could have just stayed home and see if people come to him, at which he was pretty famous. And there's probably at this day, probably not too many people more famous than Abraham. Everybody knows who Abraham is. The point being is, you're not where you are by any random chance. 
If you travel for work, means God has a plan for you. If you drive to this job or you're looking for a house in this place, you think that's random chance? No. It's not the fact that God sends us places. The main question is, how do we act when we get there? Are you trying to have a godly existence? Or do you think everything is by random chance and that you're the creative genius that had this um, you know, business idea or that these people that you work with, it's all you and your skills? No, wrong. Even where you live, even the orange that you pick up at a store, that orange, why not that orange? Why not that orange? Why did you pick this one? None of it's random. It's all by design because that orange in particular was your spark to retrieve. Like Abraham, who listened, who went and did because that's what God told him to do. And we don't see that every day in ourselves because we're not prophets. However, just think about the next time you are somewhere and you're sitting next to somebody on the bus or the airplane or the train. Maybe, just maybe, they were there for a reason. And you have a job and you have a house, just maybe, because that's what God wants you to do. So wherever you are, bring a godly existence.